Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder. And I'm Robin Clevett, also from Skill Builder, and welcome to another podcast. This is something to give your ears a treat while your mind is on other things like driving to work or back. How many hours you spend in the traffic jams these days, Robin? Well, fortunately, not that many, but I have spent I probably years and years of my life sitting in my van in traffic to and from London. So you, and if, it's you added, if you added that up? Well, I did actually do that once and I worked out that I was spending something like 10 to 14 hours a week driving on average. Mm. And if you take a working day, eight hours or nine hours or 10 hours, that's one and a half working days driving around. <laughs> that's nuts, isn't it? It's nuts. And, and you said to me that Carl over in Norway, yeah. that, that they get... They get paid from the moment they leave home. Yeah, he, he'll get his, his time starts when he leaves to when he gets home. Very civilized. They factor in everything, you know, their expenses and, and everything else. So, right, uh, that's really interesting because you don't know what we're going to talk about today. I kind of kept it a little bit of a surprise for you. Great. So let's just start talking. But you've gone straight into it right. almost by accident, falling in both feet <laughs> as usual. And. What I was going to talk about was was that organisation of a job, of the way that you do that, factoring those things in. Because yeah. I, I've just been to the safety and health show a couple of days ago, and walking around, you're always looking, okay, what's new? What are we doing here? You know, there's an awful lot of fall arrest equipment there, there's a lot of breathing stuff there, you know, because the dust is a big issue. But the other thing, stand after stand of tracking workers of for various reasons they, they put it under the guise of safety and health if you like right. right but the idea is that you've got a guy who's working in a restricted space maybe people don't know he's there or they don't know where he is you know he passes out through some fumes who knows he's there so so they've got these systems now and they've got this this control centers if you like right yeah. so you pay a subscription rate where you are tracked all the way through now I'm thinking, okay, what does this mean? This is like Big Brother. And coincidentally, we've got a guy who came round from Virgin to fix our, our um, internet there. And he was saying, oh, yeah, they're honest. You know, they know where we are all the time and everything. And I'm thinking that's becoming that real Big Brother thing of every worker, they know where they are when they're standing yeah. still, when they're mm-hmm. moving, what their heartbeat is, you know. Mm-hmm. And in a way, you're thinking, my goodness, is this, this is really, you know, getting... Not exploitation, mm. but the best out of your workers, you know, is that you even though when they go to the loo, which is a, a crazy situation, but along with that, along with all that tracking business that's going on, all this technology that you can wear that just yeah. keeps you, you in touch with somebody that you don't even know, is the other side of it, which is the tracking of the assets and the way that you organize your work. Now, I've seen over the last few months more and more of these software companies who are producing systems for quoting for job yeah but also for running the job yeah organizing the whole thing so to what extent i mean you you've been in this game a long time to what extent would you be using a spreadsheet or something like that or would you just be writing it all down on how do you keep track I start of it? with a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet is basically a list of tasks to do with a project hmm. so i do that list of tasks as a spreadsheet then that's for two reasons I then have a column for costing each of those tasks Mm. and then I also table that spreadsheet to the client so the client can see what the tasks are involved in a job okay do you use excel for that I use excel for that I don't use anything else so not another bit of software no I have no software for it I just do it in excel um, and then I base the whole project around that now with regard to organising, most projects, if you're doing, say, a domestic refurbishment or extension, if you actually list out the processes and what's involved, as you go through that, you'll see there's key stages. For example, foundations, brickwork, block work. You know straight away that you've got to get some bricks. Now, at the moment, bricks are on such a shortage that you may not be able to get them for six to eight weeks or even six to eight months in some cases. So there are now things that you need to be thinking so far ahead. So if you take a typical job, which might be three months long, during the course of that three months, you'll have to be thinking ahead and ahead and ahead. So I think that for me personally, I have got 30 odd years of experience now to know when I should be talking to people. But it's so easy to come unstuck and think, I won't speak to the underfloor eating company just yet because I'm just not ready. And then you speak to them and they say, we're inundated. 
and we can't do a design for two weeks. And mm. all of a sudden you think, oh my God, that's the program gone back. So it's becoming really difficult. And I think that um, in the UK especially, and I say the UK because we have, we're fortunate to have viewers joining us from all around the world. And listeners, by the way. And listeners. Yeah. And so um, what you tend to find in the UK is that the process of construction is really getting complicated from groundworks right to completion. If you take all the elements that we're putting in now, so with technology, for example, putting technology in, and then you've got all of this fancy glazing and loads of insulation. Um, all your electrics has got to be certified. All your plumbing's got to be certified. Your gas work, for example. And all of that needs to go through its process. You can't just... When I was an apprentice, you know, we didn't used to even put insulation in dormers. It was just yeah, studded yeah. it out, put your tiles on the outside, plasterboard, maybe a bit of lagging in. Mm. There was no vapour barrier. There was no, you know, thick PIR insulation. No, no. And so it's evolving all the time. It's being driven by legislation and also thermal regulations. And it's making the job take longer and longer and longer. Yet our minds are still, oh, can build that in six weeks or eight weeks or 10 weeks. But in reality, it's so difficult. In fact, I take my hat off to large construction organizations who manage to do it in the times that they do these massive mm. projects. And they do use a load of software. My friend's a project manager for a very big construction organization. And they can build like 40 units in the time it take me to do one. Mm. Okay, they've got massive manpower, but their sourcing of the right product at the right time is incredible. But they have a whole department dedicated to... Well, that's that. it. These people are specialists. These people are, are sitting at computers all day long. They've got all this software. They can feed all this information and see whether something's ordered. Now, what I don't fully understand, really, is that we've got all this software. We've got all these wonderful systems, just-in-time solutions and, and all kinds of things in place. And yet, you were talking about shortage of materials. I did an extension not so long ago. You couldn't get insulation. Mm. The brickies were all there waiting to work. The brickies couldn't work because they couldn't get anything to put mm. in the cavities mm. because there was a big fire at an mm. insulation factory mm. and everything else and all the, all the other things unfolded mm. from that. In fact, I think it was the adhesive that they used to put a silver foil on that was yeah. where the fire was. But anyway, whatever it was, it knocked the whole thing back. Okay, So weeks and weeks went by where people were just going, I can't carry on with this build. You know, putting the internal skin up but not the external one so you put the insulation in afterwards, anything like that. And then that that disappears. Suddenly we get insulation, you know, yeah. things get back to normal. The next thing we got, roof tiles. Yeah. Couldn't get roof tiles. They were importing roof tiles, large format concrete roof tiles from France mm. because they couldn't get them. Even, you know, people like Redland saying, we're not making any money on it. We can't make a penny on these mm. tiles. We're only doing it just to keep our customers from going to Mali or someone mm. else because... Mm. That's the only way to mm. keep them. So that Redland have bought some French money. Eh? They are, you know, now they bought French tile making yeah. facilities, shipping them across the channel. Just to so it seems to me that even though we've got all these wonderful systems in place, is it that we can't predict how the builds? Mm. It seems to me ridiculous that mm. we don't know mm. if all these builds are going on that they're going to need roof tiles. I know and do something about it. But but every year, I think every year we get another blooming shortage. Another thing that slows us down, and we think uh, we've already got the weather yeah. against us. The, you know, the snow comes, we lose five weeks in the yeah. snow. And the rain. And we've then had the a rain. Particularly wet June, who and expects then, that? That's right. And then all of a sudden, guess what? You can't get on because we've run out of timber or whatever. Yeah. Something, you know. I know, it's really, really. It's, it is really difficult. And the other thing is, in the sort of costing stage, you know, generally going up against other people, you put as much time into it as possible as we've kind of talked about in previous podcasts yeah. but as much time as you can afford to put into costing a job you cost it as accurately as you can with a few variables that you need to table but then you get a decision from a client and it might be two weeks before they want to start and straight away you're on the back foot aren't you yeah yeah straight away Absolutely. you are now thinking well i've got to finish this job but they want me to start in two weeks i really get need to get that started i need to do a soft start on this job yeah soft start and meaning <clears> you put your ladders in there or whatever else you're doing and uh, you know machine in there and then you run away onto your other job I just so, or, or leave somebody when i used to i don't know whether i told you this before but when my dad was about 80 years old 
I used to bring him out, say to him, doesn't matter what you do, just walk around, use a broom, just you're a body yeah, on body site. On the job. And uh, and that's it. And uh, he really couldn't understand it. He used to go to sleep in the corner sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, just to be there. But organisation, though, is um, is so key to everything that you do because yeah. time is money. And if you're pricing a job and you think it's going to be 150 man days, you've got to make sure that those man days are, are, are productive mm. because you're not going to get that back. It's just going to cost you money at the end. Yeah. And um, I often find that it's, it's all wrong where... You, a builder, general builder or a contractor may take a job on on a price because that's what he's got to do. Then he's employing all of his people on an hourly or daily basis. And the software that you're talking about, the tracking software for the safety and health, yeah. actually comes in as a really good tool because you can A, see if the guys are getting there when they should be getting there. You, you can see when they're not working, when they're sitting down having a cup of tea, which is fine, and a lunch, which is fine. But equally, you can see if they've left at 3.25 instead of 4.25 or whatever, because those hours add up, and they add up, and they add up. And that's where you're going to start losing money. Yeah, I, I, I've, got, I've got, as an employee, as well as an employer, I've got sympathy for that thing of just getting the job done and buggering off mm. home, if you like, because... You know, this idea that you've just got to sit on site until, you know, whatever, because there's somebody watching you, you know, somewhere. Mm. You, you're being tracked, so you can't leave a site. But you're not doing any work. Mm. So I, my approach really is to say to people, right, this is what I want to achieve today. Yeah. This is what we've got to get done. When we get this done, you can all go home. And they go, oh, great. You know, so to some extent, that moves things on yeah, at a better I think, pace. Yeah, I think that... Uh, human nature we all like to know roughly what the game plan is and so if you're not telling people what the game plan is you're just expecting them to turn up do the work and you're not saying to them the goal is by Friday we will build this and we will be getting ready for that then it's very difficult for someone if they sort of have a couple of hiccups or whatever and they don't manage to get where you want if they don't know where you want to get to mm. how do you expect them to achieve it it's kind of a lottery and I think that if you take the way big organizations work and they try to give their employees a bit of ownership in the company and in the you know what they're mm. doing they say guys your employment you know is all based around our performance as a team as a company i know yeah. that you're not the owners of the company but for the company to be successful and employ you we all need to pull together and work and i saw something very interesting in a big diy chain where i was doing some shop fitting for in their staff room they had a chart on the wall and on this chart on the wall it had weekly sales daily sales and all the rest of it it had stores own use a column for stores own use and it had theft and shoplifting mm. and that struck a chord with me because i was thinking well they're telling their employees how much money they're taking and they're kind of building kind of like a picture and it's kind of for me, as someone who was a fly on the wall, I was able to think, actually, that's quite a strong strategy because they're actually saying to them, well, guys, you know, we need to hit these targets. We need to make sure we're not losing so much money. We need to, And it's giving a bit of information back to people, which is going to enable them to think along the right lines. Well, it is. But then when you get a little piece in the paper that says that the chairman of that house building company has just had a bonus of 50 million pounds or yep. something due to their wonderful profits and you're the guy at the end of the shovel and he's saying you've got to work a bit harder because we've got these targets to meet those targets to meet I can understand where you just turn around and say them. I work harder they make more money mm. I'm not involved but then in this that's process. exactly what I'm saying that's kind of the guy on the shop floor not being incentivized and he's fighting against he's actually fighting against the cause now because he's thinking well exactly you're making he's thinking that him. guy arrives in his big flash car and yeah. he comes in in a helicopter and ooh, yeah. you know he doesn't care about me and all the rest of it so there that's the problem with a company that's um that should be uh, it's a really good point Roger in well, fact that, in fact when I often say this, if you think all the houses that get built, the tradesmen that are building these houses invariably have no interest other than their hourly rate in them. Yeah, exactly, because they're wage slaves, quite, aren't they? Quite often, they never own, a, never own their own house anyway. No, they can't afford to live in the houses they're building, and that to me is a bloody scandal. If, if only know. there was a national building company, a national construction house builder out there, that would actually say to the guys, the tradesmen, who they really rely on to get these jobs done, yeah. jobs done well, if they said to them that 
we'll give a percentage of the profit on this build. If you've done, if this, so there's 300 man days and you've done 30 man days of the 300, mm. you'll get a percentage of that profit. Then it mm. would really incentivize the guys to think, actually, I'm really glad I'm here because I might get a 300 pound bonus at the yeah. end of this or, job. Or even more radical, and I'm beginning to sound like a communist here, but I don't mean it. I'm just a guy that's worked all my life and I can see when people are being ripped off, quite honestly, to a certain extent. And I'm saying those massive bonuses, the chairman of those companies, you know, millions and millions of pounds they make, and the guys building the houses can't afford to buy the houses they're building. That to me is a scandal. And I would say that if those building companies said to the builders, you can get yourself a foothold in, we, we will sell some of these houses to the people who built them mm. at a discount. Mm. You know, even even just at cost, if you like. Absolutely. What a wonderful thing that would be, wouldn't it? Because yeah, it would suddenly be. you'd have incentivised builders who were building their own homes who would say, I'm going to make sure this is done properly because I might be living in one of them. But also, they'd have a reason for coming to work in the morning and not just feel they were being driven like they are. So you think, Comrades. Yeah, so you think... Men the, are barriers. Um, so you think that the organisations, these big organisations, yeah. are um, just, just not interested in the work of... Well, they're holding the land, aren't yeah. they? They're yeah. holding all the bloody land for a start. The whole thing is rigged against the guys doing the work and always has been, to my mind. And as I say, I know I'm sounding like a communist, but I don't mean to be like that because I understand that you have to be able to make a profit in order to go out there... No and, offence to and anyone a, in communist countries. Make a, make a risk. You know, it's not... You've got to take a risk... So therefore you need to be rewarded for taking a risk. So I understand all that, but I just think it's tipped too far that we're building houses faster and faster. All these fast track methods coming in, people are being paid, you know, and they're being laid off just like that. There's no security of, of employment anymore. We're getting foreign labour coming in, which is working cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So those guys would get this on the comments on the bottom of the, yep. the video saying, it's nice to see an Englishman like Robin doing it because everywhere I go. Now, I know that's all racist and everything else, but it has to be addressed because at some point, the balance has tipped very much in favour of those people who own the assets and away from the guys who do a day's work. Yeah. And I just think, it just makes me angry. A lot of things make me angry, you know that, in, in old age. The other thing is, I would say, Robin, I just said, while I'm having this little rant, is that this thing about the materials, if the Brexit thing ever gets done, mm. delivered, we get the mm. deal. I bet your life, I bet you any money you like, the next shortage of materials we get after Brexit, they'll be going, that's Brexit. Yeah. That's the cause of Brexit. Everything yeah. will come down to Brexit then. <laughs> so when you can't get tiles, you go, that's Brexit. When you can't get Brexit. Now, we, we had all those shortages before Brexit, yeah. before, before anybody even talked about it, before yeah. anybody even knew the word. Yeah. But now it will be used as an excuse for yeah. everything. I know, you know it's, which, which, uh, so, so I just despair of it really because it's you know it's all spin anyway go on I've, I've, I've really right, just right that's Ra Roger, Roger's rant of the oh, week is over yeah sorry so, about that mate. no I, not I, at all just, but if I if I wanted to give a few tips uh, from my own experiences of doing or organising anything yeah sorry go back uh, to this podcast yeah. sorry I went off on I want to talk about a little bit about um, one thing one step at a time and I'm a strong believer in one step at a time. If you start feeling overwhelmed and you're looking around thinking, oh, I've got to get this done, I've got to get that done, is, is you just got to make a little, again, little list and just a little prioritise and take action. So make sure you do phone that person before they shut at five o'clock. Make sure you do send that text message or you do communicate in time with the roofer to say, in two weeks, I'm going to need you. How are you fixed? Because mm. there is where the problem lies. Sometimes we are just worn out you want to you want to get home and chill out and it's what well, i really am a strong ad, you know advocate for that but equally you just need to make sure that you're so so focused on the next step and the next step and the next step and just think ahead it's never too early to have the material i always think providing you're not shelling out for it yeah but, um, can you store it is that a problem sometimes well what i tend to do with suppliers is i say i might want uh, 500 of a particular plasterboard i'll i'll order them and i'll say i want to call it off so yeah. they, they booked it out to me. Yeah, yeah. So I know I've got it. Sometimes got, they sell it, don't they? Yeah. They, they book it out yeah. and then, then somebody else comes in and they go, oh, Robin won't need that for a couple of weeks, we'll yeah. sell it. And also, choose your, right, choose your suppliers and subcontractors wisely. Mm. Make sure that they're reliable and all the rest of it because um, quite often you'll get a delivery and you'll say, I need it first drop. I had this a couple of weeks ago. I need it first drop. 
And the guy who sold the gear to me was like, yep, no problem, it's on the board, it's first drop. It arrived, by, by 10 o'clock I hadn't seen the stuff, thinking, okay, I've got to start phoning in. Phoning and said, you know, how are we getting on? You know, where's this stuff, what's happened? And he said, oh, should have been with you, should have been with you, I'll call the driver. The driver had looked at the board and thought, nah, I don't want to do that one first. Hmm. I want to do that one third, because I want to go here, here, here and here. And so regardless that I'd done the deal and it would have been really specific because I had, I had labour for the morning to, to mm, do the business. Yeah, yeah. We had needed all day to move it. And um, the driver had took it upon himself. So things like that, uh, there's so many variables, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. Undone by human beings. Undone by human beings. You see, that's where that tracking software would come in, wouldn't it? The guy would have his work, thing worked out by computer. He would have to go there. He would be tracked well, by the office. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we are, as a consumer... We live in this amazing consumerish world now where I can go back home this evening and go and think, oh God, I need that particular drill bit or I need that particular saw. I can go straight on the big Amazon and it will say Prime delivered tomorrow. And I know it will be with me tomorrow. Mm. I just know they're so, so you're reliable. Gonna build all your, you're going to get all your building materials from I have Amazon some, in the future. I have made some random Amazon purchases recently. In fact, I had a... Um, a a, an envelope arrived from China and I thought what's this I couldn't recall buying anything and I opened it up and it was all bubble wrapped and inside was like a chainsaw what you put on your fingers okay and I thought what someone sent me something which I don't recall when I look back through my Amazon purchases about a month earlier it was a Friday night and it was late a few drinks I'd had a couple of beers I came in <laughs> And I bought myself a handheld chainsaw on Amazon, and it was like a comedy thing. You could put it around a twig, and you could do this with it, you know. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and I thought, why? Why did I do that? And, and my last crazy one, just the same, was a, a disc for my cut-off saw, my small cut-off saw, which has a chain on it, like a oh, chainsaw. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? I've got one I thought, yeah. that's brilliant for trenching yeah. something out or yeah. moving something. And um, I got it out of the box. I think that came from China too. I got it out of the box and it's got a little plastic disc in the middle. And I pulled it and the thing just fell apart. So it's got two plates in the chain yeah, in the middle. that's right, yeah. And it was like, why, why did I even... No, they're made to do that. Yeah, they're so made you to do take the, the chain out. The plastic disc is there to hold the two bits together. Then when you take, you put it on your angle yeah. grinder over the thread, yeah. pushes it up and then you, you put the nut on. I've got one of those. Yeah. It's about 20 years old, so it shows nothing yeah. to you. came from Australia and it's great if you can sharpen it. And funnily enough, I lent it to a bloke, cut his thumb. Oh, lovely. Straight through. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, you know, That's he, bad organisation. He was an idiot, that guy. But, uh, you know, he, he, I said to him, you know, he was going to trim, some, yeah, it, then. trim, <laughs> trim some ends off the joists and... Uh, and they are straight for his thumb with it. So, so if there's so anyone, be careful with that, won't you? I will do. Yeah, absolutely. I've got. Um, Don't use it on Friday. I'll sling it. But um, no, if there's any. So, of the viewers that are watching this who are good at organising, tell us your secrets. Tell us. Yeah, your tips. yeah, that's good. That's what we want. The because, wisdom of crowds. Because um, and and equally, if you have trouble organising, sort of mention what the troubles are. Because quite often we all it's all the same sort of thing it's like phoning someone and them not getting back to you which has another impact on what you're doing and all that sort of stuff yeah. so i suppose it's um trying to trying to get through the maze of issues around getting a job done or getting um, any tasks done to be fair i think if you're clever at those sort of things then you're clever at them and if you're not then you probably ought to find somebody that is mm. or get a bit of software mm. to do it because for me uh to say I couldn't organise a piss up in a brewery would be an exaggeration. I probably could do that, but a lot of it, I think, I'd be a lot richer if I'd, you know, the number of times I've ended up driving 50 miles because I didn't make a phone call a couple of days earlier mm. and I need the stuff now and I've got to go, you mm. know, that's happened to me over and over mm. again. And I think there is that point where I just finish the day, I think, oh, do you know what? I really can't be bothered. Mm. Sometimes with the emails, it's a lot easier. I can make mm. that, that purchase late at night or whatever. And that point that. is really good, though, about having to go somewhere to get something because you just didn't organise it in time thinking, I'll pick it up, and you try to pick it up, and they haven't got it, and they ring the next branch, they haven't got it, and you end up yeah. doing 50 miles. That's right, yeah. Um, in fact, you know, it's a really good point because if you do do things in time, most of your materials are free delivery, unless they've got haulage yeah. attached to them, that you'd allow for that. But most of them are free delivery. So if you use your resources wisely, like your suppliers... They can do a heck of a lot of work for you. And if you pick suppliers who've got the right kind of transport with high abs 
and lifting equipment or the um, forklifts yeah. on the back, you can save yourself money as well. If you've yeah. got pallets and pallets of plasterboards come in and they can get them right near the door, yeah. you're saving yourself so much labour. These people, Lawson's, funnily enough, just yeah. happen to have the cup here. They've got that one where they can stick it up. The loft on, lifter. Your loft lifter, put it yeah. up on top of your scaffold. Yeah. Everything goes up there. Lovely. I know. What a great idea. That is a good idea, So, actually, so yeah. long as your scaffold's big enough and strong enough, yeah, that's absolutely. the other thing, isn't yeah. it? But yeah, get a platform up there, especially in London where you haven't got room on the street and bring that thing along shove it yeah, up yeah. there and the great thing with google earth now is they can have a look at it you know that's something yeah, yeah. i've used quite a lot in the past is i've had to go somewhere do a job or whatever i thought i'll have a quick look street view google earth check it out check out what i'm doing i've even done it when i had to go up north once i thought i wonder what kind of roof tiles they've got on there right. so i checked out the property had a quick look on google earth mm. saw that they were playing clay tiles thought, okay that's so information, there is more and more information out there, isn't mm. there, that you can take? Yeah, that, that's a good way of helping you organise your day. One, one little mystery, which I'd like to solve, if anybody knows how to solve it out there. We make quite a lot of videos, one way or another, between yeah. us. You know, we're, doing, we're busy. We're busy doing this stuff. We've got a good cameraman there. But we actually now have this massive backlog of editing work to be done, don't mm. we? And, and I think that's an organisational problem. I think that's basically the same sort of thing as a building. We've got a lazy editor who doesn't get the job done. Well, I, I don't get to sit in front of the camera and just talk and then go at home. <laughs> no, he's not a lazy editor. <laughs> he's an amazing editor. He is a very good... No, he, honestly, though, but he is. He's, he's absolutely up against it. So if, if we're telling you we're making videos and we're getting them out there, we are, but we've got a jam, we've got a backlog of... Which um, is good work. for you guys because there's a lot coming. Yeah, so, but um, you probably won't see it till we're dead. Um, <laughs> we've, got we've got 300 up there already. We've got, we've got 300 videos up there already. We've got videos going back 15 years, which we're just releasing now, yeah? Which is nothing to do with us. That's archive stuff that yeah. we've found in the loft. But oh, I just wonder what might show up in 10 years' time that Dylan says, oh, yeah, I forgot all about this. We shot this one. Maybe this podcast. Maybe you won't hear this podcast until we're actually... Yeah, until Brexit is until, in the history books. Yeah, until nobody remembers what Brexit is. Yeah, absolutely. And Brexit? What was Brexit? Can't remember that. No. You've done well to get to episode ten without mentioning it. Actually. Yeah. Is that the first time it's been mentioned? Yeah, I think so. And the last. Who knows? Who knows? Well, thank you so much for joining us on our podcast. What a rant! <laughs> what a rambling rant! Well, there you go. There's a holiday season coming up anyway, isn't it? So we'll get a bit of a rest. Absolutely. This time tomorrow, I'll be on the plane. Where? Where are you going? Nowhere. I just got to take an inch off that door. 